Hey everybody, Hellfreezer here. And thank- oh wait a minute, no, this isn't the end of a video. This is a Q&A! Hurrah! Alright, let's, uh, let's just get to it, shall we? Question number one comes from Sketch Animations. Uh, he asked a number of questions under different accounts, but we'll go through them all. Okay. What genres of music do you add from? Or what genres do you add music from? Whatever is required for the story. Uh, I tend to get my music from two places, purpleplanet.com and uh, from Kevin McLeod, who is something of a god among the YouTube community. Does very excellent music, uh, a selection of which, quite a, a decent sized selection of which, he makes freely available to those who give the proper credit, and I always give the proper credit. Uh, when's the general theme of funny stories videos? Uh, now, if I'm understanding you correctly, I think you mean a, a funny stories video along the lines of the scary stories videos, where it's not necessarily specifically like embarrassing stories or work-related stories. Well, that's what Idiots in the Wells is for, really. Uh, so uh, I don't do them as often, but that's, that's essentially what that's for. Do you have plans for hallucination stories? I do not. Uh, not at present. I'm not going to say never, but I have no plans at all at the moment for that. Okay, moving on. Same guy, Alexander Moore. Questions for Q&A. Are you doing a face reveal in the Q&A video? Stay tuned, you'll find out. Spoilers, it's never gonna happen. Are you doing any more collaborations? Actually, yes, I am. I'm working on one... Was two, but at the moment it's just one. Uh, I wouldn't say who they're with. I don't like to talk about who I'm doing collaborations with until they're actually done. And the second one I'll mention in a minute is the reason I don't like to talk about them. Uh, the first one is... I'm just waiting on the person getting back to me. We've, we've essentially agreed to do it. Uh, just checking that the kind of stories I want to use is okay with them. They want to do a two-story two swap. I've already got one, and uh, if it's okay with them, I'll find another one, get those recorded, and get them over to them. So I'm just waiting on a response. Uh, you, you often find when YouTubers are communicating with each other, it's not a very quick back-and-forth thing because we're essentially conducting a conversation, and it can take days, even weeks in between because we get so busy with other things channel related or if it's not channel related it's life related uh, the other one i don't think is happening now i was contacted by someone a little while before that one and they asked if they could do a collaboration i explained to them how i do collabs they seemed fine with that they asked if they could send some stories over to me i said that was fine and they never got back to me so i'm just gonna kind of scratch that one off and assume it's not happening now okay Move on. Uh, questions for Q&A. Are you doing a face reveal eventually? Yet again. Still not doing it. Do you allow shoutouts in non-Q&A videos? I do, but those are at my discretion. Uh, will you have a different channel replace your channel and start narrating stories for you, but allow more submissions or recommendations? I fully allow submissions. That's what the email's for that a lot of people don't seem to be able to find even though they somehow find the, the Facebook link, which is after the email. Anyway, grumble, grumble. And uh, I do allow recommendations, it's just sometimes when people recommend things or request things, they are things which are uh, under copyright, and it would be quite difficult for me to get permission to do them. Uh, by difficult, I mean impossible for someone on my level to get permission to do them. Uh, if that wasn't an issue, I'd certainly, I'd, well, I'd stop recording this Q&A right now and I'd start narrating Good Omens is what I'd do. Yeah, I, I, I don't think I could even get away with doing it unmonetized just for the fun of it, or even just for Patreon supporters. I don't think I could legally do that. Uh, but yeah, people can make any recommendation they want on this channel, and people make plenty of submissions, so there's no restriction on that. There's no restrictions on recommendations. Now, you yourself had made, made submissions and recommendations, and so far I haven't used any of them. It doesn't mean I'm not going to. If you're wondering specifically, I'll tell you right now, uh, there's nothing wrong with your stories, it's, except that they're very short. And oftentimes a story that's about a minute long, eh, you can't really do a video with them. Unless it's already a very long video and I just want something, and then I realise, well, I've had this story for a while, I can put that in here, I can, that, that story will fit in there nicely. Uh, so... If that's the case, Alexander, uh, I will use your stories. You're just going to have to be patient and understand it could be a while. 
but as for submissions and recommendations in general, they are fully open and welcomed. Uh, as for closing my channel down and starting up another one, I don't really know why I'd do that. I'd, I'd be sacrificing over 40,000 subscribers, which took me a long time to build up to that number. Uh, I then would have a very hard time getting partnership with YouTube, because the rules for doing that are quite difficult now. And uh, at that point, I'd probably have to turn to prostitution to make ends meet, because I'm sure as hell not going back to retail. And that's just a little joke there. I, I certainly don't mean to disparage or put down any of the people who, among my subscribers who might actually be working in the sex industry. Uh, bless you and the work you do. Okie dokie, what's up next? Uh, a daughter of Eris. Yeah. Uh, what types of scary stories do you find the most interesting to read? I really enjoy the ones that are written by people who very clearly write recreationally. It's like they might write fan fiction or, or maybe original characters of their own creation and they have taken those skills and applied it to this true experience they've had. I like that because it's a joy for me as a narrator whenever I get something that really pulls you in. Someone who knows how to take words and put them in an order in such a way it makes you feel as if you were there in the situation. You get lost in the narrative. You go along with it. You're, you're part of the experience in a way. And those are my favourite types of scary stories to narrate. Have you ever experienced something yourself with that particular topic? Uh, no. Well, as far as par paranormal goes, after my mother passed away, I did hear her shouting my name for quite uh, a number of months afterward. Uh, I do have a logical explanation for that. The logical explanation is, I was just used to her shouting on me at a certain time. And my brain was filling in the blanks. Which kind of makes me wonder if that was the case, how many times was she actually shouting on me? Uh, and the, the paranormal explanation is, even though she was gone, she was still looking after me. Uh, as for general scariness, uh, well, I was at the, the former place I used to work in uh, was robbed, was held up at knife point. Uh, but that was over so quickly, you didn't even have time to feel fear or anything, it was just, it was in and out, basically. Okay, I think, yep, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's those questions answered. Okay, moving on. Uh, Katie Shin, or Katie Shin. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Let's see. Uh, oh, the question is near the bottom here. Where did you learn to cook? I was actually taught by my mother. My mum was, I'm very fortunate uh, that growing up, my mum cooked a lot of things from scratch. We also had frozen food and tinned food and, fro and uh, things like that as well. Uh, but she also bought ingredients and cooked a lot of things from scratch. And I was very grateful. And I'm very grateful looking back now to have grown up in a house like that. Uh, well, actually a house like this, I still live in the same house. Um, because I now realise that's not normal for everybody. And I'm very fortunate to have been able to learn that and I now appreciate that. I was quite lucky that both my parents were the kind of people who made a point of making sure their kids had important life skills. And I think being able to cook a meal is a very important life skill. Uh, just as my father taught us how to do, my sister and I, how to do practical things. Like decorating, that, that, um, or that if you're going to have expensive things, in my case it's a, a computer and various electronics and things. In my dad's case it would be a car, his car, that sort of thing. Uh, you'd better learn how to fix them yourself because it can be very, very expensive, especially if you're working class, that uh, to hire someone to fix them for you all the time. Sometimes you don't really have a choice if it's really, really um, beyond your expertise. But uh, yeah, just like with my computer and that and the cooking, uh, those are skills I learned because my parents were very good in teaching us that sort of thing. Uh, doo -doo -doo. I think there was another question here. Where is it? Uh, when are you going to upload a video of Hellfreezer Storytime Cooking Episode 1? Uh, don't think I haven't considered it. Right, Sarah Ride Out, I love these stories. Would you ever consider doing an hour-long video of these stories along with neckbeards? Oh, uh, this was in reference to Adventures in Retail, I think. Uh, well, the problem is certain stories are not too hard to get. 
I can get the retail, fast food, hotel, and get them relatively easily. Neck beards. And it's a good thing, I guess, in a way. Those stories are harder to get. And I guess it means they're harder to get because perhaps there aren't as as many neck beards roaming around out there as there could be. Uh, so I couldn't really do a video involving neck beards at an hour long. Unless it just so happened to be that I had five stories that week that were quite lengthy each, which happens sometimes. And the video would turn out to be about an hour long. Uh, but by and large, it's because uh, the stories are harder to get. It's more di difficult to put longer videos together involving that sort of thing. Thank you, Sarah. Okay, let's see. Kyla... Scretting. Can I be in a video? There you go. Congratulations. You're in a video. That was easy. Endless Media. Do you do voiceover work for games or animated movies? Or shows? Nope, but I'm open to it. As long as I don't have to travel too far. Or hell, I could do it from home. Really, all I should need is a decent microphone. Uh, the Hunter 1277. Hey, Hell Freezer for the Q&A. Just for giggles, do you play as Monster Hunter World? Uh, I believe that's a video game, isn't it? Uh, I've never actually played Monster Hunter. When I am playing video games, I tend to go for... Uh, things along the lines of uh, Sherlock Holmes, like uh, the Frogware Sherlock Holmes games are very good. Even the older ones are perhaps not as well put together, they're even a lot of fun. Or uh, almost anything with Batman in it, to be honest with you. Or, or generally just things that are in somehow, some way connected to franchises I've enjoyed before. Like one of my favourite games is The Wolf Among Us, and that's based on the comic book called Fables. Where, if you're not familiar with it, you're basically, it's, um... It's fairy tale characters living in the real world. And some of you will be sitting thinking, Ha! Huh, they just ripped off Once Upon a Time! Uh, no, actually, they really didn't. Uh, because, uh, the company that... Or the, the channel, the network that made Once Upon a Time, actually had an options on the Fables comic book. And they let the option lapse, and not long after they let the option lapse, they announced their new original concept of Once Upon a Time, about fairy tale characters living in the real world. I don't know if they got sued, but <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. Everybody sues everybody in Hollywood, and that would, I think, there would have been a case there. Uh, but yeah, that's a game I really enjoy. So I was over, I was very happy when I found they were doing a sequel. Eventually, after many years of waiting. Even though it seems like they do a new Walking Dead game every bloody year. I'm talking about Telltale, specifically. Yeah, what other games have I played that I really enjoyed? Well, The Vanishing of Ethan Carter. The Vanishing of Ethan Carter, that was very good. That was, uh, uh, was a very, very serene game. You're essentially going around, you're investigating, trying to piece together what happened to this boy, Ethan Carter. And it's a very beautiful looking game as well. In fact, they released a VR plugin for it. And I don't have a VR headset yet. I'm hoping eventually. Uh, when I'm able to afford it, I'll get an H. I'll upgrade my computer a little bit and get an HTC Vive. And probably by the time I do that, the new Vive should be out. If it's not already, I haven't checked for a while. Uh, the one with better graphics and whatnots. And uh, I'll get the the VR plug-in for that game because that would be very enjoyable to be able to walk around in that world. Uh, is there anything else game-wise I should mention? Uh, well, I've played Star Trek Online. That's that was. Eh, that, that game I found a bit repetitive, actually. I mean, I love Star Trek, absolutely adore Star Trek. So I've been able to create my own character, ship and crew and all that, that was, that was a fun novelty for a while. But it's basically just shoot the ships, beam down to the planet, shoot the Klingons, beam back up to the ship, shoot the ships, and so on and so on. It's, it's kind of repetitive for me, that one. Uh, so... Yeah, I've not played that that for a while. Anything else game-wise that might be worth mentioning? Uh, doo -doo -doo. Well, there's a bunch of others I've played as well, but I don't have to go into everything right now. Okay, what's up next? Grey Roses. 
You've mentioned various projects you've undertaken outside. What's your favourite plant or gardening gardening triumph? Uh, none, actually. I, I always keep meaning to get things done, and something always gets in the way. I usually start the garden and everything in the summer, and something comes up. Be it ill health, or various work-related things, or just bad weather, actually. Uh, but, yeah. Hopefully I'll be able to get things uh, shaped up this year as, as like I intended to do last year. But we'll see. Oh god, this guy. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, if you've enjoyed the Emperor Jack stories, uh, this is the man that writes them. Okay, what do I ask Hellfreezer? Something weird, I, I have no doubt. What's your favourite foot? Yep. Left or right? And whichever is your favourite foot, do you put your best socks on it, as well as in... The sock with the hole goes on my least favourite foot. Asking me to pick a favourite foot is like asking someone to pick a favourite child. I love these things. They take me places. Sometimes places I don't even want to go. It's always an adventure. And all my socks have holes, so that's kind of a moot point. Regina McGee. Q&A question, what kind of animal do you like? I'm not really much of a pet person, but I guess I like dogs the most. Uh, although cats are kind of cute. I wouldn't really want to own a pet myself, though. Alexander Moore, question for Q&A. Do you allow any friend requests from your fans? Uh, no. I have the Facebook account. Actually, no, that's not true. Uh, if it's a personal, a personal page, like, say, my SoundCloud account... Or, um, what other things do I use personally? Well, I used to use IMDB, but they don't have message boards anymore. Or any, anything that's personal related, that, then no, because that's just private, that's not work related in any way. But friend requests are allowed on Twitter. They're allowed on the Hellfreezer Facebook page, but not on my actual main private Facebook page, which I never use. But by and large, it's just there's a little bit of a divide. There's work hell freezer and there's private hell freezer. So if it's a private account, no. If it's somehow connected to work, then yeah. Um, the more the merrier, especially on Twitter, really. Okay. Will you recognize me if you see me in real life? Uh, yes, and I know how to defend myself. Jessica Bennett. Do you ever want children? No, thank you. What do you plan on planting in your garden this year? Well, this year, nothing actually, but uh, at some point in the next few years I'd like to get the back garden all sorted and I'd like to start planting vegetables out there. That's, that's what my father actually used to do that. Uh, so I'll probably try potatoes at first because I'm led to believe those are good for getting the soil all broken up in that. Uh, and in the front garden, the way my front garden's set out, there's a piece in the middle that's cut out. My father dug that out years ago, and it's shaped kind of like a um, pentagon or a hexagon. I think a pentagon, actually. And I'm, I want to put a bush of some kind in there, something colourful. Not sure what. I'll look around and see what would be good and what will do well in this wonderful British climate that we have. Uh, what are your thoughts on America's problem with gun violence? i got to be honest with you, when I saw this question, I thought of ignoring it. I thought of giving a non-committal answer. But the fact of the matter is, I may as well just be honest with you guys, because I usually am. I would be very happy to live in a world with far, far fewer guns. I believe the only people that should have guns are people whose job it is to protect us. Sadly, some of those people are not worthy of doing that job, but by and large, I don't think civilians should own guns. And unless it's a crisis situation, the police shouldn't be carrying them all the time. I believe that an angry man armed with a gun is far more dangerous than an angry man armed with only his temper. What are your thoughts on existentialism? You know, I feel like a bit of an idiot because I only just realized that the word existentialism comes from existence. I only just realized that. What are my thoughts? What are my thoughts? Well, and I apologise if I'm misunderstanding here, I'm certainly a layman when it comes to philosophy. I think the notion of 
what makes a person, what it means to be a person. Uh, these are ideas and that we're giving far more attention to now than we ever have at any time in the past. The, certainly that debate is happening in a much more public way in regards to a, a person's uh, definition and identity in ways and not always in positive ways but I hope as we as we move on and advance as, in, as a society uh, we become more tolerant of ideas that make us think of our own existence and make us analyse our own existence than we perhaps have been in the past but it's a uh, it's a very it's a very broad subject is the thing what makes a person a person what makes me hell freezer well nothing nothing makes me hell freezer uh, I'm John what makes John John I'm sure we've all had those moments of crisis or maybe it's just me but it hits you all of a sudden who am I am I real is the way I look upon and interact with this world the way other people are there other pe other people does anyone actually exist but me which of course they do it it would be nonsense to assume otherwise but how can you know you've never been anyone else you've never lived life from anyone else's perspective so you'll never know if your viewpoint your understanding of the world is truly like anyone else's you might even wonder is your viewpoint the only one if it is does anything you do matter personally speaking i'm of the viewpoint that if nothing matters on a grand scale then well we're all here together so every action counts i i know i'm rambling a bit here but it's a subject that invites a lot of rambling at least uh for the inexperienced I, mean, I can honestly say that I enjoy being myself because I've never been anyone else I joked on Twitter that's Hellfreezer at Hellfreezer on Twitter uh, that I wanted to stop this life and become Rob Thomas and I'm certain I would probably quite enjoy being Rob Thomas but it's nonsense because I can't this is all there is and all there will be for me. That doesn't mean that I don't like my life. It just means I can't say it's better or worse than anyone else's. Because I haven't lived their lives. I don't truly understand what it means to live their lives. Because I'm just John. And I'll never be anyone but John. I have a hell of an imagination. I can imagine other things. And I have to hope that imagining is good enough, that it's enough to make me a good person, that that imagination is enough to make me sympathize with other people and what their experiences might be like. And then we move on and I wonder, are we accidental? Is this being John, Hellfreezer, whatever? How much of him is deliberate? How much of him did I have a say in? from the way I talk, from the things I'm interested in, from the beliefs I hold, how much of that's even a choice? You like what you like. You can grow by learning things, certainly. But can you grow beyond who you really are? Do people really change? The choices we make are based on our life experiences. But can we really make any other choices than the ones we have? Can you just change and and craft a better person? I think Andy Warhol is a fantastic example of that. He is a man who, if you watch footage of him, interviews of him in his younger days, he's very different. Open, talkative, still clearly an introvert, but much warmer publicly than the construct the creature we see later with the the wigs and the glasses and the, the striped shirts and all he is a man who quite literally built a public persona now did that public persona ever become the real him well no i know i don't think it actually did andy warhol often put it into the, put out into the world that he never read 
You know, you know, a lot of people say that proudly. I don't think that's anything to be proud of. But he put out into the world that he never read, when in fact he had a massive collection of books. He was an avid reader. He said he would never... Uh, he never collected, like, uh, art and antiques, like, like older things of beauty. He only liked the new and modern stuff, the kind of thing he created, the art of the future. When in fact he had a massive collection of antiques and paintings. His home was filled with them. So, who is the real Andy Warhol? The public face? The private face? The truth somewhere in the middle? Who's the real hell freezer? The guy you meet on the internet? Or the man who, when he turns off the microphone, goes about and lives his normal life? Well, I'd like to think there's more of the real me out on the internet than a lot of people put out there. And I think that's where we'll leave that question. I think that kind of broke me a bit. Sorry if I rambled too much, sorry if I sounded too ignorant, uh, but there we are. Hopefully that's a satisfactory answer. I have no idea how to pronounce that. I'm just going to call you Andy. Uh, Andy asks, uh, where does your sense of humour come from? From a dark, sinister place I'm not allowed to talk about. I tried talking about it once. Men came to the door. They were wearing hoods. I think one of them had a tail. So, not talking about that again. Two, estimated number of times you've... <laughs> you've read I didn't think anything of it. Well. <laughs> Ooh, well, if you think of the number of stories I've actually done that have had that in it, versus the number of stories I've looked over that have had that in it that I haven't actually done narrations of, it gets to incalculable levels. I was actually thinking earlier, oddly enough, I was thinking earlier about that line. And there's this sketch by Stephen Fry. Uh, Stephen Fry uh, might be, ironically for an atheist, the living incarnation of God. At least in my eyes. Okay, slight exaggeration, but he is pretty damn awesome. And back in his, uh, his days when he was at Cambridge, he was in a, in a group, a comedy troupe there, called the, the Cambridge Footlights. And while he was in there, he wrote this sketch called The Letter. And I suggest you look it up. It's made, there's a bunch of copies of it on YouTube. And it consists of Stephen sitting in a chair, reading this letter. And it becomes quite apparent as it goes on. It's Dracula-themed. Right, let's see if I can actually find... Uh, the There's a particular line in this. And I always think of that when... Whenever I read the line, I didn't think anything of it. Uh, especially after... <laughs> A bunch of things that have happened that you should definitely be thinking a lot of. I always, always think of this line from The Letter by Stephen Fry. Right, now, here it is here. Okay. <clears throat> he is to bring on his journey. No garlic. No crucifixes. No wooden stakes. Neither is he to look up in a dictionary the word vampire. It seemed innocent enough. So that's what's in my head whenever I read that particular line. Okay, do you speak any other languages? Uh, not really. Just a, a very small smattering of Spanish that I remember from high school Spanish. Which would probably serve me well if I ever decide, and it's on the list of things I want to do, to actually pick up another language. It would be, it would be wise, I think, to have a second language. Number four, uh, mac and cheese with mushrooms, really? Do you pan fry or season them first? No, what you do, chop them up, chuck them in with your pasta while it's cooking, and the flavour of the mushrooms slightly infuses the pasta as well. That's all you got to do with it. Any other impressions besides Liam Neeson? Uh, I've got a few I call impressions. Uh, I, I wouldn't say they, they sound spot on. I do a few, uh, I do a Stallone, I do, all, I do a lot of the, um, the obvious ones. Uh, do a Stallone... Oh, wait, you're probably expecting me to do them. All right. Uh, well, you know, you you come here, you, you're asking me all these these questions, like, like, do I do impressions? And I think you've been kind of rude over there. Ah, it's right, no, go easy on the guy. Yeah, he, he's just wanting to know more about you. And that, there was, of course, Al Pacino. And a bunch of others as well, but I won't bore you with those. Charlotte Field. Hello. Can I ask a question, please? 
do you mean after that one? Out of all the characters in Train Spotting, which one do you most closely identify with? Renton, Begbie, Sickboy, Spud, Tommy, or Diane? Uh, uh, uh Diane was the schoolgirl, wasn't it? Yeah, why not the schoolgirl? I think she was the least scummy of them all, wasn't she? Although I admit it's been a few years since I saw that film. Certainly not Ewan McGregor's character. Was it Renton? The one who went diving in Glasgow's worst toilet? For the drugs that he pooped out? Okie dokie, what's up next? Uh, Kiki Kitsun. Kitsune. Now, will you give... Will you give us a tour of your hometown? Uh, no. I like my privacy. Do you own any pets? Uh, I don't. Uh, I've never really had a strong desire to own a pet. Every now and again I think about it. Get a dog or a cat, something like that. Um, but the thing is, uh, the schedule I'm on, the schedule that I'm on, just wouldn't be fair to a pet. I couldn't really give it the love and affection it would deserve, and so it would just be completely wrong and selfish of me to get an animal I couldn't adequ adequately take care of. Um, I have a doggy nephew, and an actual niece and nephew, and that's good enough for me. Right, Deborah Wheeler. Hellfreezer, my question's only three. One, uh, how did you come up with the name Hellfreezer? Well, that was a, a long and sordid tale. Oh, wait, no, no, it isn't. Okay, I was thinking of something else there. Uh, doo -doo -doo. It was many, many years ago, uh, back in the days when IMDb, and it wasn't that long ago, really, uh, had message boards. They only shut them down about what, a year ago, two years ago. It wasn't too long ago. Uh, but this goes back about 14 years, I think, to when I signed up to post on the IMDb message boards. I needed an awesome name. So I started playing about with words. And I come up with Hellfreezer. Now, I think I must have uh, somehow been in my mind the title Hellblazer, which is a John Constantine. That's Constantine, rhymes with fine, comic. And even though I hadn't read those comics at the time, it was probably in my head somewhere when I was kind of just playing about with words, trying to come up with names, and it probably influenced Hellfreezer. I have actually read those comics since then. I've actually read those comics many times since then, and it's become one of my favourites. Okay, are you single? Painfully so. Oh, I'd really like a girlfriend. Or a girl who was a friend. Or a squirrel named Bob to keep me company. Anyway, number three. Uh, will you do all you can to stay on YouTube and keep giving your fans these great stories and hit that one million sub one day? Well, I don't think I'm ever going to hit one million. One million subs? Uh, hundred thousands where I'd like to be. I think that's still possibly, if I can keep at it for a few more years, within reaching distance. But yeah, I fully intend to stick with it as long as I can. If YouTube gets to the point where it's just I'm just not earning the money I need to on here, and there's another viable option out there, uh, then I'll probably jump on over to that. But if if I'm still doing well on YouTube, and I'm doing not bad right now, not as great as I'd like to be, not as great as I was doing, but still doing not bad, uh, then I'll stick with YouTube. Yeah, I'm happy to. Okay, moving on to the next one. Diana Freeman, what got you interested in narrating? Well, quite simple really. I used to listen to narrators. I'm not even sure how I stumbled across the first one. I must have been searching for something and then a narrator was recommended. Because I wouldn't have gone looking for the story specifically. Uh, and then I clicked on it, I'm not sure who it was, and I thought, oh that's not bad. And from that one narrator I must have discovered a bunch of others. And after a couple of months, I uh, thought, I could do that. I think I could, I'd quite enjoy doing that. So I started recording, recording only on my, my the microphone on my little smartphone. Then I'd, I'd transfer the audio over and edit things on Audacity. And uh, when I was able to, I bought a proper microphone, not a super expensive one, but it was better than recording on a phone. And when the channel started earning a lot of money, I felt totally justified in taking the money that I'd earned and uh, funneling it back into the channel to buy proper equipment which is the microphone and interface that I'm currently using but I've had that for mm, 
oh, I think we're heading into a couple of years now by this point. Well, maybe not quite two years, so certainly we're at the year and a half mark. And this microphone gets a lot of use, so I think I'm, it might be time to upgrade it to something better. And that's a long way to answer how I got into narrating. Okay. And next, get your animations. If there's more than 50,000 posts in your comment section, would you reply to any of them? Yeah, absolutely. I'd go through them like I do with every other one. It might take me a while. Uh, and I'd give little hearts to the ones that needed them, I'd answer questions that needed answering, and I'd delete the ones that were being arseholes. Okay. Next up. Chintz. Q&A. Which of the stories have you narrated is your absolute favourite? I love the scary story about the corduroy jester guy. Thank you for all the hard work. Uh, let me think. What jumps out at me? Uh... You've done as many stories as I have, they all kind of blur together when you're trying to think of individual ones. You do do. Actually, yeah, there was one recently, I think it was a subscriber, su subscriber story, actually. It was uh, about a family trip, uh, a mother, an adult daughter, and a stepfather. Uh, and they come across this very weird, uh, not quite right town. And there seems to be no people about, but there's, there's a lot of weirdness going on. And they have to get the hell out of there quickly, and when they go back that way, they're never able to find it again. That I actually quite enjoyed. Not just because it was creepy as all hell, but it was super well written. Okay, next up, sketch animations. Why don't you narrate stories in your own words, but read stories what they exactly say? Because it's a narrator's job to tell the story. They're not my stories. I'm I'm taking people on a journey. I'm playing a part. I'm in some, being a character. It would not be appropriate of me. It would be quite rude of me to presume to just reword things as if it was as if it was coming from my own experience or from my own preferred choice of words. The only time I'll do something like that is if I'm expressly asked to, because some people are quite, uh, they're happy to share the stories, but they <laughs> they seem to think when it's going to be read out on YouTube, it's um, suddenly going to get a lot of attention. More attention than it does on Reddit, and actually a lot of the cases it's already gotten way more attention on Reddit than it will on my humble little channel here. Uh, but in cases like that, some people want me to give it a bit of a polish for them or they'll say, feel free to rewrite this or that. And that's the only time when I'll rewrite something. Even then, I try to keep the rewrites as minimal as possible, because I picked that story because it was that person's experience, and it should remain as much that person's experience as it possibly can. Okie dokie, what's up next? Uh, doo -doo -doo, dear Hellfreezer, if you had a choice, which would you rather eat? One, a well-prepared dog steak with baked potato, Texas toast and a side of salad or two a bag of microwavable teriyaki cat with dipping sauce Well, the microwavable cat is microwavable, so it'd probably be a lot quicker to get ready But I'm a dog person as I mentioned earlier more a dog person than a cat person Plus I do like baked potatoes and I really should eat more salad, so I'd probably go with the dog stick Wickedly Bray Hey Hellfreezer, have you ever stumbled across a story that was simply just too disturbing or whatever else to narrate on your channel? If so, can we have a brief description? Thanks. Well, let's see. Uh, occasionally you will come across stories that involve... Well, there was one specifically. I think it was it last year I stumbled across it. Uh, but a man who was molesting his children. Well, actually, they may not even have been his, it could have just been his girlfriend's. Uh, and as a rule, whenever I come across a story like that, anyway, I just stop reading and move on. Uh, I don't want to keep reading it, and I certainly wouldn't want to read it for you guys. Uh, and this one has a similar reaction. I didn't bother reading the whole thing, but I just kind of skimmed the end. I just kind of skimmed through it when I realised what it was about, just to see how it worked out. And I believe the man did go to jail, but... It was... It, it, it was awful. Okay, moving on. I've lost my place. 
why don't you always change the background during one same story like Mr. Nightmare does? Because Mr. Nightmare puts out one video whenever he damn well pleases. I do this full time as a job. Mr. Nightmare has a regular job, that's where most of his time is dedicated. For him, YouTubing is a hobby. He can spend oodles of time making videos. And he doesn't care about copyright strikes and things like that as well. Well, that's not true. I'm sure he cares about them. But they're not going to hurt his channel as much as it would others, like myself, who do it full time. The reason I do it is I stick to images I know I can use. And because I need to put out so many videos so frequently, I can't always play around with the backgrounds as much as I might like to do so. Uh, ideally, I'd actually like to uh, build this channel up enough where I could hire people to work with me. I'd be able to hire a researcher. I'd be able to hire a couple of people to do animat animations for me. And I'd be able to do other shows than just reading the um, just reading the stories as well. I'd be able to do other things. Anyway, I hope that answers that. Julie Abraham, uh, I have one for your Q&A. What is one thing you were happy to have done once in your life but will never do again? I'm actually oddly happy I worked retail. Uh, in spite of the physical and mental damage it did to me, and believe me, it did. Uh, still trying, that's why my health is in as bad a state as it is. Exacerbated by that awfulness. Um, but I'll never do it again. But I'm glad I got the experience of doing it. And I perhaps should not have done it for as long as I did, but I'm very glad to have had another job before I had the immense privilege and honour of doing this job. Okay. Uh, this is Alexander again. Question for Q&A. Have you submitted a story to another channel before? Uh, no. Have you been to Giant Eagle or District Market or the mall before? I believe those are in America. Uh, no, I've never been outside the UK. Do you still get on Facebook very often? I just don't like Facebook. And in fact, uh, I'm probably going to delete my account at some point. I don't think the, the fan page over there is really helping the channel much. If any, if at all. Uh, I keep it open for the people that might want it. But even then, I forget about it. I don't post often. People all ask me questions over there and it takes me longer than I probably should to get back to them. But no, I just don't get on Facebook at all and I'm not a fan of the site. Partly because of uh, when I was working a regular job back in a couple of years back, uh, there was just too many people on there. It's this annoying thing right now where people you work with will find you and send you friend requests. And I liked a lot of the people I worked with, but they're colleagues, they're not friends. And I like to keep my work life and my personal life completely separate. But I also don't want to be an arsehole, so when they would send me friend requests, I just accept them. Which is partly why I rarely, rarely posted on there. Uh, and even though I'm away from it right now, I still don't use it for the same reasons, because it's not something I enjoy. And again, too many people I either work with or used to work with. Okay, question for Q&A. Uh, have any YouTube narrators like Unit... Uh, have any YouTube narrators like Unit522 submitted or recommended a story to you before? Uh, no. No, that's not really uh, how, how it works with us, but... What we usually do is we find our own stories. And if we're doing collaborations, we find our own stories for a collaboration. Uh, the one time, I'm not going to say who it was, but the one time a YouTuber recommended um, using air quotes for some reason but you can't see that uh, recommended a story uh, was a collaboration they I won't give you any more details because I've given you too many details regarding the kind of video it was uh, you'll know who it was uh, I don't want to shame this person but they said want to do this video I'll supply all the stories you don't have to do a thing was it no bother? I've worked with this person before. They know how I work. So they're not going to screw me over in any way. Ah, you sweet summer child, Jim. But no, uh, it turns out they had not actually sourced permission to use those stories and just grabbed a bunch of ones they liked. So I ultimately ended up not even putting uh, my part of that collaboration up because I was not happy and I will never work with this person again because of that. So, I hope that answers your question about sharing stories. Q&A, do you currently have 
Any plans for experiences? Short stories video. Do you mean am I doing more short stories? Uh, yeah, probably at some point, if you're talking like the poor kind of thing. Uh, if you mean like creepy... I'm not really sure, honestly not sure what you mean by this one. Do you currently have any plans for experiences, short stories, video? Uh, do you mean creepy pastas? I, I don't really enjoy doing them, to be honest with you. Uh, every now and again you've got one that's great. It's really worth doing. Uh, but, yeah, by and large, I just I stick to the public domain stuff. And there will be more of that on the way. Okay. Have you been to Skyline Chile before? Mm, nope. Alrighty, up next. Dema. Hello, Mr. Hellfreezer. I absolutely adore your channel. Thank you kindly. I am a big fan. Uh, do you drink alcohol? If so, what's your drink of choice? Nope, I don't drink alcohol. Uh, I'm perfectly fine if people do. Personally, I've just never, just never really felt a desire to do so. Uh, the things I do drink. The strongest I go is probably Red Bull or Rockstar. So, uh, kind of Cranberry Red Bull or Watermelon Rockstar. That's as intoxicated as I, as I get. Or maybe a glass of shandy. I did used to enjoy that at one point. Uh, are you vegan? If so, what's your favourite dish? I heard you mention something about having vegan mac and cheese once before. Uh, I'm not actually vegan, I, but I am at a point where I'm trying to substitute things I enjoy for healthy alternatives. And I've got to say, the vegan mac and cheese, uh, the recipe I came up with, very good. I'll, I'll happily have that more often when I want mac and cheese, just because there's none of the stuff that's actually affecting my health in an ill manner. Uh, I can definitely see myself becoming vegetarian one day, and I could easily fall into veganism, I suppose. It's only a hop, skip, and a jump from there. Uh, but if I ever do it, it won't be because I want the world to go vegan or anything like that. It'll be because it's right for me, as all of these things should be. Uh, do -do. In what area of Scotland do you reside? I reside in central Scotland. I don't really want to get more specific than that. Okie dokie, let's see. Miss C. <laughs> let's see, Miss C. Uh, do you make all your video thumbnails? Now I'm intrigued. Uh, I'm not sure. I do actually make all my video thumbnails. Usually what I do is once I've got my audio recorded, edited, and the video is exporting, while that's happening, I've got all my links and timestamps sorted there and then start making a thumbnail. I have templates saved for most of the more frequent things where I just need to change the text in any way I need to, colour, well, any like um, blending effects and things I want to put on it, and uh, then I find an image. Uh, a lot of the times I'm lucky the images just need a little bit of a colour filter or something. Uh, sometimes I'll need something a little fancier or I want something very specific or just something plain weird. Uh, and then I have to spend a bit of time working on that. But usually by the time the video is exported and uploaded, uh, the thumbnail's done. And that's how I do that. Okay, uh, I th okay, Paulina, Sabina, I think I've got Paulina's questions out of order here. But let's see, uh, you enjoy reading. Is there any Spanish-speaking author you like? Well, I don't really speak Spanish. But if I did, I certainly would be reading Spanish books written in Spanish. Uh, do you grow any medicinal herb in your garden? Uh, as yet, I don't grow anything in my garden. Uh, unless you're talking about weed, and then I also don't grow weed. Uh, so, I apologize if that's not what you were asking, but, you know, it's medicinal. Uh, but last but not least, what ice cream flavor? Ah, now we're on the serious stuff. Uh, do you think is seriously underrated and should be more popular? Right, this might just be a local thing because I can't always get it. But there's a Ben & Jerry's flavor called... I know, Ben & Jerry's are a very popular company. But there's a Ben & Jerry's flavor called Oh My Apple Pie. I believe it was renamed to Apple Ever After. And it's one of the single nicest ice creams I've ever tried. And I just can't get it enough. In fact, I can't even buy it at all locally. Which bums me out. Or... Oh, you've set me off now. Or Fossil Fuel. I loved Fossil Fuel. It had little chocolate dinosaurs in it, so you had to be really quick eating it because if you if you weren't careful, the dinosaurs would bite your tongue. Anyway, moving on. Elena, I think that's uh, Helen of Troy in Russian, isn't it? I say I think that because I looked it up. 
Okay, hell for a few questions from the coming Q&A. What's your educational background? Uh, just high school. I never went to college. Uh, the only thing I would have liked to have done at college, to be honest with you, and I did not have the grace to get in there, would I'd like to have uh, joined something, like I mentioned, the Cambridge Footlights earlier. Sounds like it would have been an awesome thing, or certainly, uh, it was an awesome thing back in the 80s. I would certainly have loved to have uh, tried something like that. Because the Footlights are basically, if you look at a list of former members, it is a who's who of British comedy. It really is. Uh, and that's the only thing I think I would have uh, gained from going to college. Do you have a degree? And if not, well, nope, didn't go to college. Would you like to get one? Uh, honestly, I, I don't think having a degree would help me with any of the things I want to do in life. At heart, I'm an entertainer. I'm partly doing that right now. And if I grow that into perhaps actual acting, or writing and directing, more slightly writing, then I don't think I really need a degree for that. I mean... Some people have degrees, some people don't. They just take different paths to get to the same destination, really. What countries have you been to? I've never left the UK. What are your religious views? I am an atheist. And I don't care if anyone else is. Uh, practice whatever religion makes you happy. And don't beat anyone over the head with it. And that goes double for atheists. Polina. There we are, that's the first questions that she, that she asked. Okay, do you read any comic? I've been waiting for this one. Uh, get comfy. Uh, I don't read as many comics as I used to, but I do still read a lot of comics. Now, there's ones I read at least once a year, right? Every year, Transmetropolitan gets read without fail at some point. I'm, I'm currently on a read-through of that, I've got about 20 issues left. Uh, and it's always been a fun comic. Uh, reading it now in the current world we live in, it, it's it's a bit more interesting. Uh, for those of you who don't know, it's uh, Transmetropolitan. It's written by Warren Ellis, and it's about a journalist called Spider Jerusalem. Uh, when we first meet him, he's a hermit, uh, living in the, on his own compound, uh, happy, away from the world. Uh, no one's disturbing him, just uh, he's perfectly content. Until he gets a call... Uh, forcing him to go back to a place known as The City. And it's it, that's literally all it's known as, The City. And it's, it's, it's set in America in a very far distant, unspecified year in the future, but it's certainly very far that they're super technologically advanced. Like, they have essentially what's replicators, where the food is built atom by atom, that sort of thing, and you can get clothes and things from it. Uh, they've got people who turn themselves into nanotech clouds. It's a very interesting and weird world. Wouldn't mind actually living in a world like that. Uh, for the technology, not necessarily all the political stuff. And he has to go back to the city because he's got a book to write. No, he's got two books to write. Because he's under contract and he's legally obligated to do it. And that's how things kick off. Uh, he's forced to return to the city and begin working because uh, he's as a journalist, because he's going to have to earn money while he's there, and that's his story. And he gets kind of, um, kind of dragged reluctantly into the political side of things, because that was partly why he left the city previously. Uh, I won't say any more than that, because I don't want to ruin anything specifically for you. But I suggest if you haven't read Transmetropolitan, it is so worth picking up. Uh, and of course, uh, other ones that I read at least once a year: Sandman. Uh, I'll generally read some of Hellblazer at some point. And the uh, spinning off from Sandman, actually, is the Lucifer comic book by Mike Carey. So good. Uh, if you've seen the TV show, don't go in expecting the TV show because it's very, very different. There are some similarities. There's Lucifer, Mazakin, the Club Lux is there. You, you'll find he plays piano. And that's really about it, to be honest with you. None of the other characters from the show are... Well, for the most part, I mean, DL's in there, but he's very different. Completely different personality. Not as, uh, not as charming, sophisticated, or quite frankly as intelligent as he is on the show. But um, yeah, I, if you enjoy the show, you might enjoy the comic, but don't go in expecting the show. It's very, very different. It involves, I can give you a quick rundown of it, it involves Lucifer wanting to leave creation. So it starts with him getting a letter of passage from God so he can leave creation. And at one point he even uh, attempts to train the second God. 
So, it's quite a right. And let me think, other other comics that I do read. Uh, I enjoy the early issues of The Authority. And uh, they've actually kind of been, those characters have kind of made a little bit of a comeback recently. Because Warren Ellis, who's one of my favourite comics creators, uh, has taken over Wildstorm. He's kind of guiding that now. So uh, those ones will be those ones are quite interesting. And uh, oh, before I forget, <laughs> there, there's a lot I could go on all day about comics, but I'll mention one more before I go. Is uh, I recommend Planetary, and uh, that is a comic um, twenty odd issues. I can't remember the exact number. It took a very long time to be completed. There was a lot of delays with it, but I think it was still worth the wait. Quite a satisfying ending, I found. And each issue is a different genre. You, the first one is basically a monster movie. There's uh, there's Asian action films. Where that one, let me think, that was yeah, in a way that 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 was that, now that I think about it, that was actually kind of a version of the Spectre in a way. Maybe not directly, but you can look at it that way. And there's a lot of characters in there that are essentially allegories for familiar characters. I mentioned Spider Jerusalem earlier. He's not literally in it, but there's a character in it who is effectively him. There's also a version, a character called Jack Carter, who's basically John Constantine. And lots of others will show up. And that's just that's just the dressing for the overall story. Uh, I definitely recommend that. Okay, I think we're actually getting near the end here. Let's see, what are the questions? Um, name, rank, and serial number? Uh, well, maybe first name, maybe. My name's John. I've mentioned it before. It's not a secret. One of the many, many Johns in the world. Age, 36. I'll be 37. I just had to think for a second there. I'll be 37 in September. Marital status... I'm not going to propose, then why should I tell you? That's between me and whomever I happen to be involved with. Also, I'm single. Then, why are you not proposing? What's wrong with me? Don't you love me anymore? Who is he? Who is this slut? Have you been seeing another channel? Is that it? Has he got a bigger subscriber base than me? Hmm? Nope, nope. Calm down, Hellfreezer. Calm down. The lady's just asking a question. What's it like to live in your part of the world? Don't really have a frame of reference, to be honest with you. Uh, it's fine. I know there are far worse places. It's relatively quiet where I live, my little town. And uh, what do you do for fun? Oh, I'm pretty much a homebody, to be honest with you. I, I uh, watch films, I read, I cook. Uh, I had planned on going for bike rides, but the bike I bought was crap, so that's been kind of scuppered until I get my money back. Don't need to go off and whinge about that one right now. Uh, or I spend a lot of time on YouTube, which is bloody weird considering how much time I spend working on YouTube. But I watch a lot of things on there. I watch, um... Actually, this is probably a good time to list some of the channels. Some of the channels I like. Uh, I watch, like, uh, the Andertons TV. They're, uh, uh... Well, they're basically their shop down in England. I think it's Guildford they're in. Uh, they sell musical instruments, uh, but they also have a YouTube channel where they do product demos. Uh, which... You might think, ugh, they're just trying to sell you stuff, and, well, yeah, they are, they're trying to sell you stuff. But the guys that do the demos, especially Danish Pete, and Lee Anderton himself, actually, they're so nice, and they're so talented, they're just a lot of fun to watch. Uh, I've also been watching Movie Nights. That's... Uh, th th this girl's fantastic. Well, this girl, this woman's fantastic. Why I called her a girl, she's a grown-ass woman. Uh, she does reviews of, like, bad, cheesy movies and TV shows. And she makes fun of them, but you can tell she's also kind of enjoying them as well for the most part. And they're really good to watch. Uh, I came across a channel by a guy called Maximus Iron Thumper that I've become quite fascinated with. He's um, I've been watching quite a lot of his videos recently, and he he's a guy he's basically living off the grid. So we all his, his electricity comes from solar power and solar batteries. And he's converting rainwater into fresh drinking water, that sort of thing. Uh, and he's been doing it for a few years, so he's obviously got quite a good, efficient setup there. And I think he used to be a blacksmith, hence the name Iron Thumper. Oh, and if you like uh, movie reviews, uh, I recommend uh, The Horror Guru and Count Jacula. If you haven't checked those guys out, they're well worth a look. Uh, uh, so that's uh, th that's some of the things I do in my spare time. Oh, I also play guitar, though I haven't picked it up for a while. 
I probably should because I'll need to redevelop calluses on my fingers because it'll hurt when I pick it up again for the to play it again for the for the next little while. Okay. I'm genuinely interested in knowing the person I've I've lost myself. Uh, yeah, I'm genuinely interested in knowing the person I listen to on almost a daily basis. Uh, you come across as a very nice person. I'm really not. I'm a total bastard, but no one believes me. Who's lived life and has the scars and has the scars to prove it? I don't get the impression I'm listening to a twenty-something. I'm not sure if I should be flattered or insulted, but rather as someone who is mature. Well, well, kind of, uh, and very mellow. Mellow is good. I'm mostly pretty mellow. Uh, most of the men in my family are, but if you catch me at the right moment. Really, it's a compliment. Yet my own life being crazy and unpredictable at the moment, I've sort of lost my own centre, so to speak. Uh, oh, I've definitely been there. I have been there uh, and thought I'd never crawl out of that pit. But you do, eventually. Sometimes you don't even realise you are crawling out of it until eh, daylight and fresh air. I really appreciate that in others. In any event, I hope you'd receive this drafted email. Okay, that was good. Thanks very much for those questions. And Sai B, who's your favourite author? If I can only pick one, I'm going to say Neil Gaiman. Uh, if I can pick more than one, I'd say Kim Newman as a close second, because Kim Newman writes these amazing books called Anno Dracula. I think there's about five, almost six books. I think there's a sixth one coming out at some point where it's set in the world, a world where it's kind of hard to describe it. It's part part f original fiction, part alternate fiction, and part alternate history. And that sounds odd, but what I'll, what I'll explain what I mean by that is it's set in a world in which Dracula beat Van Helsing and the others. And he returned to England and married, wooed and married Queen Victoria, turned her into a vampire, and she became young again, and they rule Britain as Queen and Prince Consort. That's the alternate fiction part, because it took an established story. Uh, it also involves original characters created by Kim Newman. In fact, that Dracula part's not even the focus of it. Dracula, he's in the books, but he's gen generally... It's his influence on the world that is focused on more. So it, it, it involves the alternate part, and the alternate history is where events of the real world will unfold, but in a fictionalised way. For example, the first book is a Jack the Ripper story, only with vampires. The second book is a World War Two, no, a World War I fighter pilot story, with vampires. You can see where I'm going. Uh, the third book is, well, it's, it's a few, couple, few different things, part spy story. Uh, it, then this is a good example of what Kim Newman, Kim Newman does with the characters. He's got his original characters. He's got actual historical persons, like Winston Churchill shows up there. Orson Welles was in two of the books. Andy Warhol shows up in book four. And there's various other characters, that, actual people. Uh, sometimes they will be vampires, other times not. It just depends. And the Andy Warhol story is uh, quite a good example uh, of that uh, Involving, involving real characters, that sort of thing, and fictional characters. And he uses borrowed characters as well. Uh, there's Hamish Bond, the Scottish secret agent who is James Bond in every way, apart from the fact that instead of being called James, he's called Hamish, which is pretty much just James. And book four is uh, it takes place heavily in the entertainment industry and the drug scene of the late 70s, early 80s. So yeah, uh, I guess those would be my two favourites. If I can only pick one, definitely just Neil Gaiman. Right. Uh, will you ever read any Lovecraft? Probably. I've not actually read any Lovecraft, but a lot of people whose work I like rate him. And these are not stupid people. Uh, so I'd certainly be willing to check out his work out. I understand there's, um, more in recent years, the opinion of the man himself is not high. 
Uh, that's a very long and lengthy debate, uh, certainly worth having and getting into, but this isn't the place to do it. In regard to the kind of man he was, some say he was a product of his times, others say a little, he was a little more than a product of his times, and others say he grew up a bit as he got older in regards to some of his attitudes, but uh, as I say, a lot of people whose opinions I greatly respect value his work and think it has merit, and uh, yeah, I'd certainly be willing to check it out and give something of his a shot. And someone else asks, uh, how about some Sir Arthur Conan Doyle 2? I've done two of those so far, I did The Red-Headed League and A Case of Identity. Uh, I will be doing more home stories in the future, I'll, also, I'll basically be continuing with things I'm, I'm already doing, I'll continue on with Dracula, I'll continue on doing more home stories, and I'm gonna, of course, I'll be continuing on with the Emperor Jack stories. My, my throat, my voice feels a lot stronger now, and hopefully you can hear that, than it has for a long time. So I think I'm just about at the point where I can certainly continue uh, on with what I was. In fact, I'm this close to getting back on my regular schedule, and that'll make things a lot easier. Uh, at the moment, I've just been doing a video a day, or I had been doing a video a day, and I'm now able to get two done a day, which is very close to what I used to do, which frees me up time to then from the regular videos to then do additional things. So there will be some more Arthur Conan Doyle, uh, quite likely there'll be Lovecraft in some form, and I've been looking into doing other things as well. Uh, I think there was I, was... I was thinking of doing a reading of The Amateur Cracksman, which uh, isn't a home story, but it was actually written by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's brother-in-law. Uh, and I read a little bit of it and I liked what I, liked what I saw, so I might end up doing that as well. I'd like to, but I'm not 100% certain how much of it I can use, if any. I know some of them were published in like 1915, and those should be in the public domain, but I'm not 100% certain on the copyright issue here. I'd have to look into it. Uh, and if I did that, to be honest with you, it'd be more for my own amusement than anything else. But yeah, lots of things planned, uh, a lot of ideas on the horizon, constantly thinking of new things to do, and uh, yeah. And I, th I think that probably wraps us up for now. I'm not sure how long this will be when it's edited, but I'm actually very glad I re-recorded it. I did it once before, and I think we got a much, uh, much, you got much better answers this time. Or you certainly got them put much better than you did last time. And with that, I'm going to head off for now. So until next time, thank you very much for listening, and take very good care of yourselves. <laughs>